about partial fractions. Um, you guys hopefully know how to take, you know, for example, two, this is very simple, two fifths, and add three fourths, right, to get a single fraction. You combine like terms and such like that. Um, what we want to do is, I might as well show you this, just so common denominator, right, to create the same fraction, to bring them together. So I have eight twentieths plus fifteen twentieths. Go across, go, uh, go across the top. Twenty-three twentieths. Um, so partial fraction decomposition is taking the single fraction and going into a sum of difference two separate or multiple fractions. Okay. I heard, I heard Jupiter was um one of the top areas too for Corona. All right, um, anyway, so I'm taking a single fraction and I'm splitting it up into separate fractions, into a sum or difference of separate fractions. So I have a single rational function here, which is basically a fraction with polynomials on the top and on the bottom. And the bottom is already factored for me. So we're going to start with linear factors in the denominator, okay, which these are linear factors. Uh, if it's not factored, then you guys would have to factor it, but it's factored for me, okay? So these are called linear factors, obviously, because they're linear expressions. No um, exponent on the x other than 1, you know, no square roots. They're linear factors. When you have linear factors, what you're going to do is we're going to take this rational function, right? Factor the denominator. It's already factored for me. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it equal to separate fractions, because that's the goal of partial fraction decomposition. Take a single fraction and separate it. When you have linear factors, um, the first one, and they're separate, they're not repeated linear factors, the first one is going to go under the first fraction, and the second one is going to go under the second fraction, right? Because that's kind of the idea, right? You had separate denominators and you brought them together. So I want to figure out what the numerators are going to be. Um, usually we'll put a plus sign here. If we get minus, we'll deal with that later. The numerators, when I have linear factors, are going to be constants. So these constants are unknown. So A and B are unknown numbers. So 5x minus 1 over x minus 3 times x. This single fraction is going to be decomposed or separated into these two separate fractions where the first um, factor is under the first denominator and the second factor is under the second denominator. So how do I determine, how do I do, deal with this? Well, this is basically a rational equation. So how do I solve a rational equation? Well, um, what I like to do is, and I'm not going to show this typically, but take the whole thing and multiply everything by the common denominator, which in this case is x minus 3 times um, x plus 4. And when I do that, the denominator here cancels with that. I'm just left with the numerator here. And then when I multiply this by this, uh, expression the x minus 3 cancels so I'm left with a times x plus 4 and then here the x plus 4 cancels so I'm left with the b times x minus 3 so now I have this um, rather than fractions I have this basic you know kind of um, what do you call it a basic uh, equation so <clears throat> um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute my a a x plus 4 a distribute my b plus bx minus 3b. And then, you know, I have to create a situation that allows me to solve for a and b. Now, there are two unknowns, right? a and b are two different unknowns. So that would mean that I would need two different equations to be able to solve for two unknowns. So I'm looking for a system of linear equations of two variables. Now, I'm going to compare my x coefficients, right? On the right-hand side, I have an a and a b that are both in front of x's. And on the left-hand side, I have a 5. So if these two statements are equal, then that must mean that a plus b must be 5, right? 5 is the coefficient in front of x here. If I were to bring my like terms together, a and b would come together and be added to create 5, right? So I have a 5x here, and then my x terms have to be combined to create that. So I have my first um, equation to, to uh, dealing with a and b. Constant terms, I have 4a and negative 3b. These are my constant terms in this equation, and they would have to be equal to negative 1 for this equation to be true. And what that does is it creates a system of linear equations of two variables, a and b, 
which you could use either method to solve. Um, I like elimination if I'm already in this form, but you can use substitution as well. I'm probably going to multiply everything by 3 and just eliminate B. So I have 3A plus 3B is 15, and then 4A minus 3B is negative 1. So when I add them together, the Bs are gone. I have 7A is 14, so my A constant is equal to 2. Um, once I have A, B is easy to find, right? So A plus B is 5, so 2 plus 3 is... <laughs> 2 plus B, I meant... <laughs> 2 plus 3 of B is 5, so B is equal to 3. So now I have my A and my B. Therefore, this 5x minus 1 over x plus 3, x minus 3 times x plus 4 is also known as A is 2. 2 over x minus 3 plus B was 3, 3 over x plus 4. And this is my partial fraction decomposition. I take this and I separate it into the sum of different fractions. So that's what partial fraction decomposition is all about. I thought I was going to sneeze. <clears throat> so that's the goal here. Take a single rational function and separate it into the sum or difference of separate. Could be 2, 3, could be more. It depends on... Um, it all depends on this denominator and what it is to begin with. So in this case, it were we had linear factors, and they, we call them distinct linear factors. They were different from each other as my denominators. So I approach it this way. Separate. Each of, them, um, each of these fractions have the denominator in them, and then this is a constant, and this is a constant. Um, Sometimes we have something called repeated linear factors. And you could say that's what I have here because this is an x times an x minus 3 times an x minus 3. So x minus 3 is considered a repeated linear factor. And again, the denominator is already factored for me. If it were not factored for me, then I would have to factor it first. But it's factored for me. So, you know, agree that x minus 3 is a repeated linear factor. It's linear and it's repeated twice. So, when I have a repeated linear factor, um, I'm going to separate it into, so there's three total factors, so I'm going to have three total fractions here. So in the first case, I had two total factors, so I had two total fractions. Here I have three. Even though one is repeated, I still have three of them. So the first denominator is the first factor, the second denominator is the repeated factor only represented once. And then the third denominator is the repeated factor represented its well, two times. If it were repeated three times, then I have another one with it repeated three times. Now, due to the fact that they're all um, linear factors, because, uh, the uh, numerators are all constants, A, B, C, three different types of constants. So three total factors on the bottom, and they're all linear, so three total fractions here, and all, uh, all numerators are um, constants. And I'm showing each of these factors represented, well, once for this guy, once here, twice here. So if, if, if this were repeated again, I'd represent x minus 3 to the third with a d on top there. Um, again, I have a rational um, equation. So I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to multiply it by the common denominator, which in this case you know, is that. So uh, x minus 18 is left there, so I want to get rid of that. A over x, so the x cancels, so I'm left with a times x minus 3 squared. I'm going to actually multiply, well, I'll show that after. B, so the x minus 3, or one of the x minus 3 is going to cancel, so I'm still left with an x, and I'm still left with one of the x minus 3s, plus c times what's left. So the x minus 3 squared cancels, so I'm left with just an x. So now I have a basic... Um, basic equation, uh, I have to, you know, compare the two sides. So I have to compare the coefficients of x here to the coefficients of x's here and the constants here and the constants here. So I need to distribute on the right-hand side. So I'm not ready to do that yet. I'm not going to distribute the a. I have to do the exponent first. x squared minus 6x plus 9 plus, let me multiply that out, b times x squared minus 3x and then plus cx. Now I'll distribute the a and the b. 
So ax squared minus 6ax plus 9a plus bx squared minus 3bx plus cx. So let's compare um, coefficients. Let me start with the highest degrees. I have an a and a b in front of x squared on the right, but I have no x squared terms on the left which means the coefficient of that x squared term on the left would be considered a zero. So I can say that a plus b should be equal to zero. Because I should have no x squared term left after. Um, I have a negative 6a and a negative 3b and a positive c all in front of x coefficient, all in front of x terms, all linear terms, and a 1 in front of it, this x term, which means that negative c, oh, sorry, negative 6a plus b, oh, sorry, minus 3b, minus 3b from there, plus this c coefficient is equal to 1. And last but not least, my constant term, so I have a, uh, oh look at that, just a 9a, that's it, huh? So I have a 9a here and a constant term here, so that 9a should be equal to negative 18. So I have a system of equations here, technically of three variables, and when I have three unknowns, I'm expecting three different equations, and I have that, and this is a nice easy system of three equations to deal with because I could straight up get, nine, uh, get a right now. A is equal to negative 18 over 9, which is negative 2. So I have my first unknown. Knowing that negative 2 plus B is 0, that means that B is 2. I have my second unknown. And this makes this easier because I have negative 6 times A, which is negative 2, minus 3 times B, which is positive 2, plus C is equal to 1. Now I can solve for C. 12... Twelve minus six plus c is one. So this is six plus c is one. So c is negative five. And I have my. Hold on. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. How did you get that negative two? I, you lost me right in that section. Here. Yes, right there. Nine a is negative eighteen. If I go oh, from the minutes. bottom. Okay, 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 okay. Mm -hmm. You can continue. I got it. <laughs> so this was a system of three variables, but it was a nice system because I could find A right away, B next, and then go straight here and find C. So it became a nice system. Um, so now I can rewrite this. This X minus 18 over X times X minus B squared is equal to A over X. A was negative 2, negative 2 over X. B was positive 2 plus B over X plus 3. And then what was C? C was negative 5, so minus 5 over X plus, uh, my, minus 3, sorry guys, X minus 3. Not that. Copy it down correctly. And I meant 2. <laughs> I'm replacing my variables now, right? B equals 2, C is negative 5, so minus now. Um, 5 over x minus 3 squared. Let me just make sure I copy that down right again. Um, so negative 2 over x, that matches. B was 2 over x minus 3, that matches. And C was negative 5 over x minus 3 squared. So this is my now decomposed <laughs> fraction. So that x minus a 18 over x times x minus 3 squared can be represented as a sum and difference of these three different fractions. So partial fraction decomposition. I'm taking a single fraction, I'm decomposing it. That's a word. I'm separating it into the sum or difference of separate fractions. Now, both of these examples dealt with linear um, factors on the bottom. These were two distinct linear factors. This one had um, three total, but one of them was a repeated linear factor. Um, this one has a quadratic linear factor, a quadratic uh, factor in the denominator. So again, this is factored for me. If it were not factored for me, I would have to factor it completely. And 
being that this is a quadratic, I would try to factor it further, but it doesn't factor anymore. So I'm left with a quadratic factor on the bottom. So I have this 8x squared plus 12x minus 20 over the product x plus 3 times x squared plus x plus 2. I can't factor this any further, so now I have a linear factor and a quadratic factor. But I have only two factors, so I'm going to have two separate fractions here. One of them is the linear factor, and in the um, numerator of the linear factor, we always put a constant. And then under the and then we have, under the second, the quadratic factor. But in the numerator of a quadratic factor, we don't put a linear constant. Uh, we don't put a constant term. We put a, a linear and a constant term. So this is going to look like a bx plus c. So the way that I think about it is if I have a linear term, you know, the numerator now has like a degree less than the denominator, if you want to think about it like that, like a squared term has the numerator as a degree less, as a, you know, as a linear term, you know, x to the 1, and then the denominator is x squared, so the highest degree is like a 1 less than the bottom, but I'm also representing every single term. So if I have a quadratic factor in the denominator, my numerator has a linear um, expression, so a bx plus c. So linear denominator, constant numerator, quadratic denominator, and again, this is not repeated, a quadratic denominator than a linear um, numerator. So it depends if I have distinct linear factors, but even though I still use constants on the top, if I had repeated linear factors, I represent the repeated linear factor, but the numerators are still constants. But when I have a quadratic factor, the numerator is a linear case. So Again, like I said, it's almost like one degree less than the denominator. Um, but again, I create a rational um, equation. So I'm going to multiply the whole thing by the denominator, which is x plus 3 times, I'm just going to x squared, I'm going to x plus 2. And the reason you know, I do that is because technically I want this to cancel, and it will. Multiply it by itself here. I'm going to left, uh, be left with 8x squared plus 12x minus 20. And this uh, being multiplied by this, the x plus 3 will cancel, so I'll be left with the quadratic term plus bx plus c. When this is multiplied by this, the um, x, but I don't have the fractions anymore. So I have to obviously distribute and deal with stuff over there, so I'll be able to um, compare both sides. So the left-hand side is fine, but this a has to be distributed. And then I have to FOIL this because I have a um, binomial times a binomial. So first, bx squared, outer, plus 3bx, inner, plus cx, and then last, plus 3c. Okay, uh, so let's see what we have here. I'm going to start with my squared terms. So I have an a and a b. That's it, right? So I have an 8. So I have a plus b should be equal to 8. So the sum of all my squared terms, their coefficients, should be equal to the coefficient here if these two sides are equal to each other. Um, let's see, what are my linear terms? I have an a, a 3b, and a plus c to give me 12. So a plus 3b plus c is 12. I'm not missing any linear terms, right? No. Then, my constant terms, I have a 2 and a 3c, Ooh, a 2a, right? I forgot to distribute that a, so this 2, I have a 2a, right? a, x squared, ax, right? That's crazy. Almost made that mistake. So I have a 2a and a 3c to be compared with negative 20. 2a plus 3c gives me negative 20. And then, now I have my system of equations of three variables here. And it's not as pretty as the last one because I have a, b equation, a, b, c equation, and an a and a c equation. So, 
I have to choose to eliminate something. Let's see. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to eliminate C. So I'm going to take, so this is equation 1, equation 2, and equation 3. So when I have a system of equations of three variables, I want to shrink it down to a system of two. And I choose to shrink it down to a system of A and B. That means I need to um, get rid of C. So I'm going to use equation 2 and 3 to eliminate C. So I have A plus 3B. I'm going to take this to the next page because I'm going to minimize it. So let me just copy and paste real fast. Okay. Alright. Um, yeah, so I choose to eliminate C. So now I'm going to take equation 2 and 3. Eliminate C so that I can match it with this, just A and B equation. A plus 3B plus C is 12, and 2A plus 3C is negative 20. Line up my stuff. I want to eliminate C, so I'm going to multiply equation 1 by negative 3 so that I eliminate C. So now it becomes negative 3A uh, minus 9B minus 3c is negative 36, and 2a plus 3c is negative 20. So that when I add them together, the c's will go. Check my numbers. So let's uh, go ahead and add them together. I have a negative 1a minus 9b. Thank you. Minus 9b is equal to negative 56. Now I have an equation of just a and b. I had an equation of just a and b here. So let's create that little system. And there's a trick using matrices um, in your calculator to solve these faster. I want you guys to know how to do it by hand also. Oh, this is perfect because my A's will just straight go when I add them together. So, okay. So that worked out nicely. So my B's, I'll, I'll be left with um, negative 8B is equal to uh, negative 48. And that worked out nicely. Therefore, B is 6. Got my first constant. Can easily get my second because a plus b is 8. So a is 2. And now I can get my last one. I'm going to use equation 3 here. 2a plus 3c is uh, negative 20. So 2 times 2 plus 3c is negative 20. So 4 plus 3c is negative 20. So 3c is that fraction. So 3c, you can see that. Negative 20, oh no, minus. Oh, that's not bad. Negative 24, c is negative 8. Got my A, B, and C. Finally, I'm at the point where I can now say, where are you? This thing, which I'm just going to copy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this thing here. Ooh. That's not what I wanted to do. This thing here is equal to... <laughs> The following sum and difference of separate fractions, the first one being a, which is 2 over x plus 3. Um, plus b, 6x minus 8b, bx minus or plus d, right? bx plus c, b uh, is 6 and c is negative 8. So uh, 6x minus 8 over the quadratic factor. X squared 
plus x plus 2. Partial fraction decomposition. Now, I'm not even going to do um, repeated quadratic terms, which you can have. You can have distinct linear terms. You can have distinct quadratic terms. You can have a linear and a quadratic. You can have a linear and a quadratic and a repeated linear. You can have a linear and repeated quadratic. You can I mean, there's obviously a lot of different scenarios that can happen. I'm going to limit it to this, though. 